Hey everyone, Matt Thomas here. Thanks for watching. So this is a much shorter summary video based on the much, much longer 42 minute Lexile Explained video. The reason I'm making this summary video, and honestly I didn't want to originally, is because I don't know how many of you are going to want to sit through a 40 minute video about Lexile. And so I thought, let me just give you the answers. Here's the thing though. If you do not watch the entire 40 minute video, I promise you, you will not get the whole explanation of things. You'll probably have more, after watching this summary, if you just watch this summary, you're probably gonna have more questions than answers. And if you email me like, hey, can you explain this a little more in depth? I will say, please watch the 42 minute video. After watching that video, you will know more about Lexile than anybody else that you know, except for others that watch that 42 minute video. Uh, all the information I got from Lexile uh, itself, I called Metamatrix, they own Lexile, and I asked them the questions. And so I don't want anyone to think that, 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 that what's on the video is my interpretation of it. Not at all. I, took the ex I got exactly from the employees. I interviewed employees. I went on the website. Uh, I talked to people. They're very nice over there and very transparent. Uh, went to their website, pulled the words right from their website. So everything I'm going to share with you, except for a couple things that I might say came from another study. But everything I'm going to share with you came from Lexile specifically. Please watch the whole 42 minute video or you will not get the entire uh, 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 explanations of things. It's like math. There's a reason why the, 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 ma the, the, the answers are in the back of the book. It's because the answers don't tell the whole story, right? You have to learn the process. So I'm gonna give you yes or no answers, but you may go, huh, that doesn't sound right. Watch the whole 42 minute video. Anyway, let's get started. So I start the video by talking about the intention of this video. The intention is just to make us all smarter about Lexile, right? To explain everything about Lexile, how it's calculated, et cetera. It's not to endorse or to critique Lexile, uh, not at all. It's literally just like, here's what's going on with Lexile, you know, from their words specifically. So I continue the, the video by, by talking about how reading is so difficult or how, how difficult reading is. There's no area of the brain that specializes in reading. I make that point because I, we're teachers, right? So most of us read a lot. And sometimes we forget just how difficult reading is because it's not natural for our brain. Um, I, I talk about uh, the realities of reading as an adult. Um, over 50% of all adults in the U.S., read at a sixth grade level or below like there's a reason why reading is so challenging um mainly because we're not born with the ability to do it it's something that we have to learn by you know by by through effort so anyway i set that up because i want i think that's very important to know um even lexile will recognize that i'll explain through the video so how lexile scores are determined so the way lexile score determines their score is they they, they were they sorry they start with word frequency. They calculate word frequency and sentence length. Word frequency and sentence length. Now, they did not come up with that formula. There are 17 different readability formulas out there, at least the ones that I found. Um, and they're all about the same. Uh, some of them use amount of syllables. Lexile doesn't. But word frequency and sentence length. Then they run it through what's called a rash system. If you, if you uh, uh, aren't sure what that is, I had to Google it myself. It's just a model for analyzing data. Um, and so the way that they, that they define word frequency is they have a word bank of 1.4 billion words taken from 90,000 books, texts. Um, those 90,000 books are made up of either uh, college textbooks, uh, novels, trade paperbacks, uh, uh, young adult novels. Like I asked them, they said a whole bunch of different ones. I think it's a very fair uh, word bank. I think that's, that's pretty good. And so what they do is they take up the 1.4 billion words from those 90,000 books they, they uh, uh, calculate how often a word appears in every 5 million word block. So the word the is going to appear way more often than the word perpetuate. Um, and so the would be a, uh, an easily uh, uh, identified word, identifiable word. So they give it like a, 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 you know, a lower score than say perpetuate, which doesn't occur that often. That is how um, they determine it. The, they define sentence length. But they don't have an exact like number. So sentence length, um, I, I saw a lot of different studies did not come from Lexile, but a lot of different readability scores could uh, say like, like if a sentence has 14 or fewer words, it's much easier to, rem to, 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 um, to read. If it's between 14, 15 and say 25 or 30, it's much more difficult and so on and so forth. Um, and so I couldn't find any data to support that. But honestly, it makes sense because of the amount of clauses that are in there, things you have to keep track of. So I'm not, I'm not going to question that. Like that, that just makes sense. So word frequency and sentence length 
That's how Lexile scores are determined. I, I talk way more about that. If you just if you watch the uh, a lunch longer video, it'll show uh, support uh, for that. And then where there's there's maybe not some support, but common sense would be okay with that. Um, I mentioned about the Lexile analyzer, like how they analyze longer uh, novels. Uh, and so they splice it into 125 word sections and they run it through their, their analyzer, their 1.4 billion words of text. Um, uh, the downside of that is because is though you could have a, a paragraph that's like a 400 Lexile score and a paragraph that's a 1200 Lexile score and then they average it out. So if you hear a novel that has like a 600 Lexile score, don't, not every paragraph is 600. Some could be 300, some could be 900. It just kind of averages it out. Uh, I talk about that more in the, in the book. Um, so how level grades are determined are so the way they determine level grades and i thought this to be very very interesting and i was very thankful that lexile was so transparent so what they did was they took tests for nine years 2010 to 2019 they took tests um and three million students um across the u.s and virgin islands and they took the ranges of scores and that's what they made the um, uh, grade level scores out of. So what they what they told me was this. They said, okay, so if there's three million out of three million students, whatever ninth graders, whatever the section is, these are kind of generally the ranges. You know, throwing out like the super low and the super high, the general ranges. That's what we're going to say is ninth grade level. Um, and then the tenth graders all score within this range. That's what they say is is tenth grade level. And so um, if you, the reason why you see such a huge range, like ninth grade grade level, according to Lexile, would be 1050 to like 1350. It's because that's generally what most of the students in ninth grade scored. Now, yeah, there's going to be some high, some low, but they just took the general ones. That's ninth grade. Tenth grade, here's the levels, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I thought it was, they were very transparent doing telling me that. I thought that was really cool. So does Lexile associate to grade levels specifically? They, they give a range. How accurate is that range? This is from Lexile itself. So Lexile says there's no direct correspondence between a specific Lexile, Lexile measure and a specific grade level. They continue to say this information is for descriptive purposes only and should not be interpreted as a prescribed guide about what an appropriate reader measure or text measure should be given for a particular grade. So Lexile themselves is saying, Hey guys, here's the range of what most ninth graders score. I'm just using ninth grade for example, but we're not saying that that's the grade level. It doesn't the 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 rate the 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 you know the the word frequency the lexile measure it doesn't specifically attach to a grade level. There's no direct correspondence. This is just generally what students scored. I thought that was a very uh, a, a good explanation. Um, I do a bunch of critiques, uh, um, not not from my personal like like things doing the research, things that I've I've read from other reading experts. Uh, uh, you could watch a much longer video for that. One thing that really jumps out is that they don't accurately indicate the rigor that can be used with the text. So Knight, for example, our, our great 10th grade teachers teach a wonderful unit on Knight. Knight's only a third grade reading level. So keeping that in mind, like Lexile score doesn't equate for the rigor and the great conversations that you could have. Um, there's a bunch of other uh, um, uh, critiques that people have brought up. And, and I thought they were fair, but at the same time, Lexile is kind of like saying, you know, hey, this is what we are. This is what you can use us for. Uh, some of the critiques may respond to things that Lexile never claimed to be in the first place. So um, oh, there was one section where because uh, Lexile uh, um, focuses on sentence length, you can easily manipulate the Lexile score by just replacing the word and with a period. So there's an example there where a, a, a person just replaced one word with a period and it, it adjusted the Lexile score by 400. So kind of to, to, to show how these, uh, um, these readability scores can easily be manipulated. Um, so the question, is Lexile based on science? No. Now, before you go, wait, what? Watch my whole longer 42 minute video. It'll explain everything very clearly and I think you'll be very satisfied with the answer. Is Lexile based on a scientific approach? Yes, because if you if you uh, define scientific research um, following a systematic approach, it literally is clearly predefined and repeatable steps to acquire new information. Lexile does that. Now, here's the thing. Is Lexile based on science? When you talk about the science of reading, no, it's not. Lexile never claims to be based on science, though. And before you go, wait, Matt, I've been to the website. I see the word science on there. Yes, I've copied and quoted right there the exact words on their website that include science. They never say based on science when it regards to like, you know, neuroscience, et cetera. What they do is they base it on a systematic a scientific system backed by research, scientific approach. They use the, those words very, very clearly. 
And they're not wrong. Like Lexile does base everything on a scientific systematic approach. So yes, everything they claim is absolutely accurate. They never once say that they're based on science. Now you could go, Matt, do that semantics. Okay, so keep in mind, when you're saying based on science, you're giving the, 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 the interpretation or the pres uh, 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 presumption that it's based on the science that's reflected on what you're, you're, you're talking about. So if it's reading, of course, you would base it on neuroscience. If it's about plants, you would ba base, it on, ba base it on like botany or something. Lexile never claims to be based on science. And, there, and so whoever else is kind of saying, Lexile, based on science, no, they use a scientific approach, which is 100% accurate. So uh, props to Lexile for being very transparent with that, uh, even if others are interpreting it a little differently. Are grade le reading level scores accurate? I would say no, but, um, but, but Lexile isn't claiming them to be. So keep in mind, it's hard to put an accurate, natural uh, uh, um, uh, level on something that just doesn't naturally occur in our brain. Uh, I give a whole explanation on why that is. So if you're like, what? Watch the whole 42 minute video. Um, again, uh, uh, going back to the Lexile doesn't claim to be things that other people have said it to be. I will say as we end this video, Lexile was the, the people I talked to Lexile were wonderful people, very transparent, very uh, uh, um, honest with everything. Um, their website's very, very transparent. Uh, Lexile is, I, I think it has a lot of value when talking about reading level growth. I think they do a lot of great, I think Lexile is honestly and sincerely trying to create reading levels, not reading grade levels. So like, if it's like, hey, here's a baseline reading level, and then, you know, at, the more you read, let's see if we can get your level higher. They're not saying the level equates to a grade level. I mean, yes, they have that chart, but they're also saying, look, we're, this is, we're not saying this is exact science, right? So don't, don't attach it to it. We're just saying here's maybe a suggested range based on some tests. They're not claiming that the grade level is an accurate indicator based on, you know, how the brain learns. So I think, uh, I think Lexile scores can be very valid, especially when they're connected with something like a much bigger project, uh, not just reading in isolation. Um, but again, if you want, if, if anything you saw in this video, you're like, wow, I want some more explanation. Please watch the much longer 42 minute video. It will explain everything. You will walk out of there being like, dude, I know everything there is to know about Lexile scores. Thanks for watching.